the spinal cord is the main link between the brain and the rest of the body. But without the spinal cord, we wouldn't be able to move, to feel, or even to know the position of the arm in space. Uh, so here, we developed a new way to directly look at uh, spinal cord functional circuits, non-invasively, in humans. And this had never been done before. Uh, so we used functional MRI, or magnetic resonance imaging, to look at spinal cord activity in healthy subjects, in 19 participants. And in the brain, uh, fMRI is commonly used in order to, to look at neural activity, and it has really helped gaining knowledge on the, um, the brain's functioning. But in the spinal cord, things are a bit more complicated. The first reason is that the spinal cord is very small. So compared to the brain, it's of about 1.5 cm at the level of the neck. It's also located deep inside the body, and surrounded by bones. So you have all the vertebral column and also around you have uh, moving organs such as the heart and the lungs and so on. So it's a very challenging environment to work with. We analyze the signal with a new pipeline in order to really highlight the functional architecture of the spinal cord. So for that, we wanted to see which region of the spinal cord are changing their activity simultaneously. And we could highlight some very specific and very detailed uh, networks that correspond to the, to the processing uh, taking place in the spinal cord. And this was the first time we could reach such a high level of detail uh, directly in humans in the spinal cord. We confirmed the validity of the approach uh, in healthy subjects. But considering the, the central position of the spinal cord in sensory and motor processes, it can be impacted in a wide uh, array of conditions, such as uh, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, and so on. So uh, using this sort of methodology, we can better understand what's happening at the level of the spinal cord in these conditions, and this can help develop new and better treatments.